Welcome back, this is Brian Keller, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how Visual Studio 2012 can help you create fully automated UI tests for your application. Now in the previous videos, I showed you how Microsoft Test Manager can be used by manual testers to help them author test cases, to run those test cases, and then to even semi-automate those test cases by taking advantage of what we call fast forward for manual testing. The advantage there is that as your software application starts to stabilize, you can allow manual testers to quickly fast forward through parts of that application, saving them time uh, that they would otherwise be clicking and typing in URLs and that sort of thing. And now eventually, once the application reaches some kind of steady state, you'll probably want to take those manual tests and turn them into fully automated UI tests. The advantage, of course, is that you will no longer require human intervention to run these tests, and you can also take advantage of running these tests multiple times throughout the course of the day, and they can quickly serve as a warning flag if developers happen to regress functionality, which was previously working. Now, in order to do this, you will need to have Visual Studio 2012 either premium or ultimate in order to write coded UI tests. You'll also need to have some basic familiarity with C Sharp or Visual Basic skills, although we will generate a lot of the code for you automatically. You'll need to have Microsoft Test Manager if you want to take advantage of the workflow I described. Of course, you could also create these coded UI tests from scratch without using Microsoft Test Manager. Another optional component is Team Foundation Server, which allows you to then orchestrate things like a fully automated build deploy test workflow, which I'll show you in another video. And perhaps most importantly, you need to make sure that your application is testable. So in the MSDN library, we have documentation which shows exactly which types of applications we support. But generally speaking, pretty much any web application or Windows Forms, WPF application is going to be supported very, very well. And then we have partnerships with other third-party UI control vendors to make sure that they can easily extend their controls to support coded UI tests. And you can even extend your own controls to work with coded UI tests as well. So let me show you just a quick demonstration of how this works. So what I have here is the test case that I was showing in the previous video. And so this is a test case that my test team has been running for a while to validate that when you start typing in invalid values into the quantity field of the shopping cart that it doesn't actually break the shopping cart. And they've been testing this for a while. You can see here that they're using different values to do that using the letter A, the number 0, negative 5. And that test case has been passing on a regular basis now for a while. And so now what I would like to do is actually turn that test case into a fully automated coded UI test. And so if I come to Visual Studio 2012 and start a new project, one of the options is I can start a C Sharp project using coded UI test project. Now when I start this project, I'll get two options for how I want to actually create these coded UI tests. One option is I can open up what's called the coded UI test builder and just start recording my interactions with the application in much the same way that a user might. The other option that I have is to start with a test case that was already run by a manual tester. And when they ran that test case, they had the option of creating what's called an action recording. Now, because my manual test team was already running this test case, I'm going to take advantage of that option. And I'll just say OK. This allows me to select the specific test case. I happen to know that that's test case number 41 over on Team Foundation Server. And now this is going to pull forward all of those individual steps. And it's going to generate code that allows me to run this particular test case in an automated fashion. So if I scroll down here, you'll notice that we have individual methods which then correspond to the names of the test steps I was working with earlier. So here's a list of those test steps. And each one of these individual test methods now captures the individual actions that the tester was performing when they recorded that test case. So here you can see where they're clicking on a particular hyperlink, for example. Now, the other thing to point out here is that we automatically data bound this coded UI test back to that data parameter list of values that's stored as part of that test case. 
So what this means is it's automatically going to run this for each value that's stored as part of that test case. And so if your test team later on discovers that a particular value causes this to break, they might want to just come back to this table and update it as appropriate. There's no need to re-record that particular test case. So we're almost done, actually. The only thing we need to do is actually uh, take into account the fact that at this point in the test case, if you saw the previous video, we were actually asking the tester to validate that that given application was showing the correct value. Now, because I have automated the actions of the tester from a mouse and keyboard perspective, I also now have to automate the process of the tester inspecting the application to make sure that the value looks accurate. To do that, I'll just place my cursor right where I want to perform a validation. I'll click on Test, Generate Code for Coded UI Test, and I'll use the Coded UI Test Builder. This opens up the Coded UI Test Builder I mentioned previously, which allows me to capture new actions that I want to record as part of my test case, or it allows me to capture validations. In this case, what I'm doing is validating that after the user types something like the letter A, or negative 5, that it reverts back to the original value because those are invalid values. It would be a bad business model if we let a user type negative 5 and in effect we would end up paying them to shop from our store. So what I'll do is I'll just take this crosshair and drag and drop it onto that particular field. This shows me a property bag listing all of the individual name value pairs that I can validate on. So there's a lot to choose from. I'll just add a single assertion on that particular field. It's going to validate that this is set equal to 1. Now you may also want to add an assertion failure message as well. So you can say something like quantity does not equal 1. Now that may seem very trivial and straightforward, but if you start building coded UI tests which have a lot of these assertions in them, then this can really help with your time to resolution by allowing the tester who's evaluating these failed tests to quickly understand exactly what went wrong. So it's a really nice best practice. Now I can generate that code. I can say validate quantity. We'll say add and generate. I'll just quickly clean up my sample application and now I'm ready to go. And so when I return to Visual Studio, you'll notice now that it has a new method. So now if I right click and say run this test, it's going to build my application and then it's going to run that test case once for every row of data that's part of the data parameters that's stored in that test case table. And so now you can see that it automatically opened up my application and it's going to start driving the UI of that application in much the same way that a user would. But notice that I'm actually not typing anything. I'm not hitting my mouse or keyboard. This is fully automated at this point. And so it's validating these values. It will run it once for each row of data that's in that, that uh, test parameters row. So it should run three different times. So we'll let that run. And so what you saw in this video was just a very quick example of how Coded UI Tests, which is a test within Visual Studio 2012 Premium or Ultimate, allows you to fully automate UI tests, which allow you to quickly alert your developers whether or not there's a regression in code that they may have checked in. And it also requires no manual intervention.